come to the end of your life, are you going to be able to say, I have no regrets whatsoever? Hi, I'm Sharon Gilbert, and I want to welcome you to Sky Watch Women. Believe it or not, two of our panel members on Sky Watch Women today are my wonderful husband, Derek Gilbert, who is the update king of Skywatch, and Joe Artis Horn, Hi, who is, uh, I'm, what are you? You're the king of You're trying of to figure out how to introduce I'm, me to the women's program, and people are like, wait a minute, what is he doing on you there? You know, I get so much email <laughs> saying, why isn't Joe on the women's show? Oh, I'm and, sure. and that's why we've had to bring you on. Exactly. But best of all, my special guest today, Robin Bertram, who has written the book, No Regrets. And I got to tell you, you will want to read this book. Give this yes. to your, give this to everybody you know because Mother's Day is past, but Father's Day is coming up. So welcome to Skywatch Women. Thank you. And Sharon. you're right in Thank you. between two of the prettiest <laughs> ones ever. <laughs> oh geez. It's an honor to be with you today. I'm so Thank glad you. you're here. You know what? I asked uh, my husband and Joe to be on that. We we had them both. We were all four of us on the panels for the broadcast TV shows, which you're going to see pretty quickly here. In fact, I think they started airing this week. We brought you back because I want men's opinions on many of the topics that Robin has brought to the fore in this in this book, and that is how to live life to the fullest. Why even, why no regrets, first of all? Why the title? Um, the title, Sharon, my father on his deathbed, looked me in the eye and said without hesitation, Robin, I have no regrets. And it was shocking to me because I knew he meant it, but I was in my mid-40s, and I thought, I have plenty of regrets. How do you say that mm -hmm. at the end of your life that you have no regrets? So it really started a journey for me, uh, introspection. How can you possibly say that and mean it? Um, so that was the impetus to, to write the book, is his deathbed statement, because it was so powerful to What me. makes this book different than other um books that are telling us how to, to live life to the fullest and here 30 days to this or six months to this. Right. Why do you think this book is different? Well, Sharon, basically because the struggles that I went through, I went through a health crisis where I was given uh, the potential diagnosis of ALS with two years to live. That's a degenerative neurological disease that people generally die from. No yes. cure, yes. no cure. treatment. Yeah. Two years, right. two years is the lifespan. Um, I was five minutes from my home and could not find my way home, Sharon. Hmm. Oh my goodness. I, I looked in the mirror one morning, I picked up, my right hand had been um, very weak. I couldn't lift my right hand. And one morning I went to brush my hair and I tried to brush my hair with my left hand and I couldn't pick my left hand up. Oh. And so when you are truly facing that kind of situation, um, you have to become really real with yourself. Mm. And you, you start to look at your life and you start to prioritize and, and really think about what is important in life and what is not important. You know, you told us on, a, on the broadcast programs, you were mentioning how your neurologist had said, well, come back in six months, another right. six months, and I can see no more degeneration. The fact that you've recovered, yes. use of all of, I, that is healing. Yes. That's not just a pause or a stop in, in the degeneration. You've been healed. Yes. There's yes, no I physician have. pathway back. No, right. praise <laughs> right. God. Right. Yes. What did your neurologist say when you went in and said, guess what? <laughs> well, he was quite astounded, to tell you the truth. He, he was shocked to see me, and he was even more shocked to see that I had no issues. Very, very is, surprised. Is he a believer? He is a believer. Oh, and he he's a, a real believer, believer now. Yes. Believes in miracles <laughs> yes. of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Well, Joe, you've got your own story about healing. To say, you know, I know your healing came through surgery, but still it's healing. I have no problem with the fact that God allowed me to be redeemed from this disease called diverticulosis through physician intervention. I'm fine with whatever method he decided to use. Mm -hmm. Um, back in January, some of our viewers know uh, of this year, I had 16 inches of my colon removed uh, due to a lingering series of diverticulitis, which is an infection that comes about if you have, to, if you have the disease called diverticulosis, which in very short, um, it, it, it's a, a disease that attacks the colon. It mm -hmm. creates these little weak places mm -hmm. in the tissue yeah. that can rupture and burst. And, right. and that can be very serious and even fatal if untreated. And I had managed it for years or tried to with diet and exercise and losing weight and watching carbs and all of that. 
um, being very active, training martial arts and so forth. Um, but last December, it finally, uh, another round of infection. This time, we couldn't beat it with antibiotics and become resistant. And so I found myself in a really sticky situation where my, my primary care doctor didn't want to give me any more antibiotics, um, but also was having a hard time getting in to see a surgeon or a specialist that could help me. So there was this time bomb kind of ticking off from the moment I run out of medicine before this thing fully blows up. And now I'm in big trouble. And now I'm going to end up in a situation where I'm in ER in the middle of the night with whoever they've got on staff that can now deal with like a, uh, an intervention surgery instead of a pragmatic kind of planned out surgery. So I sent Casper McLeod a text. Now, Casper has a testimony very similar mm -hmm. to yours, Robin. Mm -hmm. And Derek knows more about the details mm -hmm. of this that. This is the man we were telling you about yes, before yeah. we started. Yeah. He's yeah. a dear friend of Skywatch, but he also has a testimony based on basically praying his way out of what was supposed to be the end of his life. And that was two decades ago. Right. Uh, wow. Just another mm -hmm. God-inspired intervention. Um, but I had the surgery in January. I'm still recovering. And... During my recovery, I started pushing boundaries a little bit. I thought I was doing okay. Uh, started coming back to work, doing a lot of really late days when I probably shouldn't have. And I started having pressure in my chest uh, about six weeks ago. And um, I'm trying to make this as quick as, as I can. But I ended up back in ER. And the doctor, in short, does a series of initial tests. And he says, well, I can't tell you that it's your heart, but I can't tell you that it's not your heart. And so I was in a position where my wife and my newborn, they end up going home, and I'm all by myself in uh, the part of the hospital where they have all the chest pain uh, patients and stuff like this. And I had to basically wait overnight uh -huh. to learn what might be. And, and they were using these big, you know, big words like de um, degenerative. Um, I, uh, frankly, at this point, I can't remember exactly, but basically it means that the valves that your heart mm -hmm. pumps blood and feeds to might be deteriorating. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm thinking, man, I should be too young for this. And I'm, I'm asking the doctor, yeah. right? Aren't I too young for some of this? Well, no, it's not as uncommon. You know, here in America, we're seeing all kinds of stuff based on diet and genetically modified foods and things like this that, that are almost an anomaly in places like China, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But so could it be that in the morning, this is what I found myself contemplating, could it be that in the morning I learned that maybe my heart is not what I've hoped it has been or hoped it would turn out to be. Could it be that the landscape of my life changes? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not putting what I went through on a, on a scale at all with what you dealt with because yours was much worse. And, and you had many, many, many months to really pray through that process where mine was just a matter of hours. But I did find myself thinking about things like if I did come morning, because they were going to do more tests hopefully would find something. Would I look back at my life and be one of the guilty that God says in his word, when a man's home is not in order, he's worse than an infidel mm -hmm. in the eyes of the Lord in terms of overly uh, trying to be available to the ministry, things like this. <clears throat> would I find that as a father, I had not been available to my kids as much as I should? What about my wife? Are those departments being managed as a priority or am I taking things for granted? You are thinking about your legacy. Exactly. Yes. And that was one of the reasons, by the way, when Joshua Dorlin at Charisma was talking to me about some of the authors and he mentioned No Regrets, why it touched me personally because I thought way more so than me and my, my episode and just not to leave yeah. you hanging, they did the following morning do a series of tests and basically all they could conclude was you're very healthy, you're probably pushing too much right after your surgery, mm -hmm. anxiety can do this to you. I, I don't yeah. feel super anxious, but, but I'm trying to manage my time better be more available to my kids, more available to my wife. But the book, No Regrets, I mean, you, you inf infinitely, on a sliding scale of how serious this was, were really faced with. Here is a diagnosis. Here is basically mm -hmm. a death sentence. You have X number of months to live. And out of that was, that lens is what, is where you were coming from when you were putting uh, this book together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I remember um, my daughter, it was, she was uh, engaged and to be married. And that was one of the concerns. Will I be able to attend her wedding? Will I be able to walk down the aisle? And that, those thoughts ran through my head. Mm -hmm. And um, 
when you face that, I, I think of Jonah. Remember Jonah in the mm -hmm. belly of the fish? And if you remember, Jonah was going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God will allow us to go through storms, trials, whatever the issue might be, so that we do get back on track or so that we do become more focused in what he's called us to do. I know for me at the time, there was another book that I was working on and it was a book that needed to be written and it was an assignment of God. And I had let that kind of lay on my computer and, um, it's, it was in my heart, but it just wasn't in my computer. Mm. And uh, I remember this is something I need to do because God assigned it to me. Mm -hmm. And so I felt kind of like Jonah in the belly of that fish, mm. you know, tangled, entangled in death. But God, I know there's more. I know there's more. I know there's more to do for you. I know there's more to experience. I know there's more to, um, to leave. And so uh, that was a real journey for me. And I, I thank God I walked down the aisle at my daughter's wedding. Mm, that's so wonderful. <laughs> and I held my first grandchild. Oh, how wonderful. Amen. I did. And you thought you would never yes. live to see right. that. I thought I would never live to see it. And even in that, and I have to say this because, you know, sometimes we're challenged. We're challenged because we have this faith struggle inside of us. And, you know, God knows all the prophets of the Old Testament, you know, they had questions for God. They cried out to God, God, where are you? Why do the righteous suffer and the, the wicked mm -hmm. flourish? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we see that. God was so faithful in the midst of all that. And, and he gave me a second chance like he gave mm. Jonah a second chance. I love the fact that, that the scripture says not only did he bring Jonah back around, he took time and prepared a yes. special fish. Right. We, we <laughs> tend to think of, oh, this fish just happened to come along. No, God prepared a special kind of fish just to get Jonah's attention. Uh, we're going to take a really quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to have Derek tell you all about the board to the side of the head that sort of got his attention <laughs> this, in just a minute. After facing the possibility of her own death, Robin Bertram took inventory of her life and realized she was given a second chance, a chance to love deeply, to choose joy, and to live life without regret. In her brand new book, No Regret, she shares her personal testimony of miraculous healing and asks the hard question, if you were to die today, have you really lived? Skywatch TV is proud to announce the Live With No Regrets special offer. In the new book, No Regrets, Robin Bertram encourages you to live each day as if it's your last. Cultivate an awareness of everyday blessings, develop a pay it forward mentality, and participate in your very own 30 day love challenge. Also, when you purchase No Regrets from Skywatch TV, you'll also receive Learning to Lean from Defender Publishing. A collection of 10 inspirational personal accounts of triumph, survival, and perseverance. A compilation of true stories that illustrate God's grace at work today. Plus, have you ever wondered when you pray why sometimes God makes us wait for answers knowing it can be so difficult? Or why he answers some prayers in just a moment and others days to even years later? Well, also included in this limited time special offer, When Heaven Seems Silent. Walk with authors Mark and Tammy Andrews through their inspiring personal journey as they provide biblical insights to challenging questions just like those. In this book, you'll learn to discern God's voice, wait without anger or disappointment, face your own emotions, and so much more. Sold separately, these items hold a retail value of over $50. Yours now for only $29.95 plus shipping and handling. This incredible collection of true inspirational accounts of God's miraculous healing and divine intervention is sure to encourage and strengthen you. The Live With No Regrets special offer, available now at the Skywatch TV store. Welcome back to Skywatch Women with our special guest, Joe Artis Horn, my favorite husband in the whole wide world. <laughs> Those of you who know who I've been married before, you're laughing. Uh, you're the best one so far, honey. <laughs> Winning. I think I'll keep you. And my special guest, Robin Bertram, who has written and taken the time to give us this wonderful book, No Regrets. Um, 
you you so got to get this book. I mean it. Father's Day is coming up. You have to buy this for the men in your life because men need to be reminded that they are also leaving a legacy. And as a father, as a husband, you were given a board to the side of the head. This was before you and I met. Mm -hmm. You were fired. Yeah. And it changed the direction of your entire life. Can you tell that really briefly? I was working in secular radio in, um, you know, from, from college age on. And I had worked my way up from Peoria, Illinois, to Philadelphia, to Little Rock, to St. Louis. I was program director of a radio station in St. Louis in 1989-1990. It was a secular music station playing the kind of music that I, I was in charge of picking out songs that uh, later I didn't want our daughter listening to. Yeah. Um, and she was only eight months old at the time I was fired by long distance telephone call from New York. Ooh. The day before Thanksgiving. Didn't even give you the face to face. No. No. Um, and and it, sadly, that's not the worst story I could tell you about other friends of mine who've been fired in, in that business. Radio it's, yeah, is it's a hard, nasty, it's hard a nasty business. business. But I, I, I was fired, <clears throat> as was my, um, my wife at the time, my ex wife. Um, we were just basically told turn in your keys and get out of the building. Um, so, day before Thanksgiving, uh, eight month old daughter, and suddenly, no, you know, from two incomes to zero in, in the span of like a five minute phone call. Um, that led to a period of, of wondering what I was doing and where I was going to wind up. Um, it, it culminated uh, some years later with the, the breakup of that marriage mm -hmm. and me as the primary caregiver. Um, I was Mr. Mom, mm -hmm. basically. And a cute one at that. <laughs> <laughs> and w w with a six-year-old little girl, um, I will confess that I began getting into the word to try to proof text to find out why I was right. <laughs> <laughs> to justify my anger. Yeah. To justify my anger. And found that I couldn't, not only could I not justify my anger, but I began to realize that I couldn't explain to our daughter why I believed certain things were right and other things were wrong because I didn't know what I believed. And that's what led me to, first of all, to, to begin digging into apologetics to, to understand why we can know the promises of God are true and we can trust in them completely. But also to um, understand and appreciate the, the blessing that I had been given. Most men, I found, and, and this is a study that you can, you can look up online, most men in America spend less than 15 minutes a day with their children. And during 15 the, minutes a day? Yeah. And during that period, from age two through seven, um, there were times, I was selling real estate for a while during that period after getting out of the radio business, where I had to take their two-year-old uh, along with me on to, to show property, which I found is a really great, because you don't come across as a threatening salesman when you've got a two-year-old yes. on your hip. Ah. Uh, um, but, it, it, but it was challenging. Uh, but the blessing was that I spent a lot more time with her mm -hmm. when she was little during her formative years than I would have had I not been fired from that radio exactly. job. Because mm -hmm. before that, I was spending 14 hours a day at the radio station. Radio was my life. And I don't think Nicole would have turned out the way she did now. She, she remembers those daddy-daughter moments, those times that probably you were so tired, you just didn't feel like spending the time with her, but you did. I had to. And they meant the world to her. Yeah. Those tiny things. You you said in one of our broadcast show. And by the way, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You, you are. I love well, you. Well, the, the and, and the the, outshot, the upshot of all of that is that I have lived long enough now to have heard my daughter say to me, "Dad, you're my hero." Mm. Put that on my tombstone. I'll be a happy guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think every parent should hear that. We and we should try to be that for our kids. You, you said in one of the broadcast shows that after this experience of being diagnosed with ALS and then realizing at the, as you've been healed, but during that 18-month period where you did not know whether or not you would be healed, you were still praying for it, you began to appreciate the little things in life. Yes, yes. It's amazing, Sharon, how different the world looks once you've gone through that kind of trauma. The world looks different you really learn to appreciate and value people more, um, experiences more, 
creation more. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm guilty as charged as a workaholic too. Um, I, I am very um, task oriented. I like to check my boxes. <laughs> and sometimes that's been a disadvantage because it would, ha it would take priority. Um, since my experience, I put the computer down. I take the time. I listen more. I pay attention more. Mm -hmm. I plan more. And so it's, it's been a, a real eye opener for me. And I know that God, when we uh, when we're going in a, a direction that's not what he, I was doing all good things, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, but he wanted a different perspective in my life. Well, good grief. Executive producer of Freedom Today Television, National Director of Regions Christian Women, uh, Women in Media. You've been involved in the Women of Faith Project for years. You are a workaholic. Uh, well, I pray with, uh, I pray with Thelma Wells. She forwarded the book uh -huh. and she's with Women of Faith. So I pray with her every week. Well, praise and have God for, for the, years. And you have you 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 are leaving a legacy for women and by helping us to be better mothers and better wives, you're helping us to leave legacies for our families. This book, No Regrets, is going to change families, I believe. Thank you. I really do believe that. Um, how do you think your experience, Joe, has changed the way you're approaching your family as a father, as a husband? Realizing that you're not immune to the things that can happen to anyone. It's not that it's just a total blind game of roulette, that you can't do anything to improve the chances that you won't end up with cancer or suddenly diagnosed with something. You certainly can eat right and try to do things like that. But at the end of the day, none of us are immune from yeah. that moment when the doctor steps in and gives you news that you didn't see coming. And again, I'm not putting what has happened with me at all on a sliding scale with Robin. Um, that is a real health crisis where mine always looked like there would be some options and things like that. But, um, but I did spend some time thinking, what if this gets worse? Because with every diagnosis, the introduction always seems maybe a little bit optimistic on the front end of a lot of them. But there are always these, it's not likely, but then it could go these directions. Mm -hmm. So you're always starting to imagine like, what if I'm not the guy? that falls into that lucky category of people that, that prevail over this stuff? What if I'm in that 2% that ends up with something ruptured and maybe I can't get in fast enough and maybe I don't make it? And, and you know, I tend to think that way, you know, mm -hmm. with, with stuff like that. I tend what to, if is one of those I play the what if game and it, it's one of the things we, we use for the television program all the time. Well, what, what if we do this and what if we say that and trying to make everything friendly for Christian television and things like that. It's one of the things that I use for the ministry. But I do tend to play a little bit of the what if game. And I did in some of those days in the hospital when I was waiting for the next round of results like with my heart, stop to ask the question, what if I find out in the morning that things are much worse than I imagined? Have I spent enough time with my kids? Have I spent enough time with my wife? Have I way over prioritized ministry? See, we talked about this a little bit in one of the network programs. You can even error, and you see this a lot with pastors, you can err on the side of championing too much ministry. Oh, yeah. And then your family is not a priority. Yeah. So you're out there warrioring for the Lord and he's like easy. This isn't even in balance. And sometimes I think the Lord will use your health or he'll allow you. If, if it's not that he's afflicting you with something, he's allowing oh, you basically to destroy yourself mm -hmm. and he'll, he'll hold back maybe some of that protection as you begin to realize, hey, my body's not holding up to what I'm doing. And he's like, maybe you should look at what you're spending your time with. Hmm. Okay, Lord, let's kind of rechannel what we're doing with our time. And, and does that make sense? I Absolutely. think it makes perfect sense. And, and you've gone through a number of life crises. And in fact, uh, the Columbia experiment, as we'll call it, that was something that you've referred to as a board to the side of the head. But that's something you felt as a man that you needed to do. And yet I personally believe that the Lord took you through it for a reason. It was uh, a, a change, leaving a, a very successful and, and lucrative career in, in steel sales to go back into broadcasting, took like a two thirds pay cut yeah. because I just had to Working go back. Working for peanuts. <laughs> yeah, to, to prove that I could do it. But you're right, it, looking back on it, it was, it was training. It was, you know, God saying, okay, he, he, you'll, you, you'll go through this. Financially, this is gonna be a disaster for you, but A, you'll figure out your priorities, uh -huh. B, You'll get some good training on how to actually 
be a talk show host, which is kind of now what I do, <laughs> but for the right reasons. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was sort of a spiritual board to the head, but it was, uh, again, aligning priorities. Um, God didn't use my health, he used my career to uh, career choices to kind of realign priorities and get me to focus on what's really important. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek, when I was um, a young woman, I, I managed an optometric practice. And I did so for 13 years, loved my job, loved being a career uh, person, um, loved the money, you know, made a good, good salary. Mm -hmm. And I remember driving home from work one day, my children were small, my mother took care of them while I was at work. And the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, I want you to go home and know me. Oh, I was like, what, what, what? <laughs> We had just built a big house, put in a nice pool, and our whole life was around that, you know, a two family income. Mm -hmm. And God said, no, I want you to know me. And so I told my husband, he thought I'd lost my mind. It took about a year to convince him that it was really God and not Robin. <laughs> and um, what? And I, what did that could not have been God? <laughs> but you know, when I did, I know um, the Lord <clears throat> wanted me to raise my children, not my mother. He wanted me to raise them, and He wanted me to take the time to really delve into scripture and know him. Mm -hmm. I was already saved at that time. Mm -hmm. But um, that special relationship that only comes through dedication of time in the word and in prayer. Mm -hmm. Be still. Be still and know. So it was quite a, a task to give up my what I saw as my future. Amen. Well, praise God that you listen to the Lord <laughs> and yes. that, uh, that you are healed. We want to thank you for tuning in. Buy this book. I got to tell you, no regrets. You will regret it if you do not get it. I want to thank Joe Otis Horn. Thank you. My wonderful husband. He's the cutest guy in the world and the tenderest heart, Derek Gilbert. Mm. Robin Bertram, thank you thank so you. much for joining us on Skywatch Women. And you know what? Next time we have the guys on, we'll see if they can wear really pretty hats. <laughs> Isn't that nice? send, your, send your letters to sgilbert at skywatchtv.com and let me know what color hat they should wear. For Skywatch Women, I'm Sharon Gilbert. This is Skywatch TV.